Touching now, uh, recently presidential hopeful Herman Cain has been appearing everywhere. And he's preaching very different ideas about what it means for Republicans running as president. Um, you know, I don't think that there's no political experience, experience backing Herman Cain. Uh, I mean, he, he does have a very big background in the food business. Mm -hmm. uh, but Speaking again, he rose yeah. on the ladder uh, at the food business. You know, he was vice president of, I Godfather don't know pizza. exactly, Godfather, Godfather Pizza. Godfather. He started with Pillsbury. He then he went to that. And then he was at Burger King, mm -hmm. and he was president and vice president of all these countries. So, is he qualified to be running for president? Okay. I mean, I think if you're going to go on the basis of there were hundreds of thousands of people questioning Obama's, you know, ability to be in a candidate and his experience, and I think if you're the same person who's doing that and backing Herman Cain, it's blatant hypocrisy. I mean, I know that he probably does have a lot of good experience in the business side of it, and he does bring good, I guess, new ideas to politics, but you kind of have to, you know, practice what you preach. Okay. Do you know about his 999 plan? I, mean, I do. I, I like his simplicity of his plan and his ideas. He's very charismatic. I like that. Can you explain? Do you have the ability to explain what the 999 plan entails? Yeah, I can just give for you the people some. that doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. Don't okay, know, it's 9% income tax mm -hmm. for everybody, 9% national sales tax for everybody, and then a 9% corporate tax. Across the board, that's what yeah. everybody would have. But he did say that some people will have their taxes raised. He did right, say he was forced into saying 50 that. 50% of the while. population don't pay income taxes. But that wasn't the original message before, well, right? Well, right. They, they still need to hammer out the details, and plus a national sales tax on top of a state and local sales tax. I mean, that's, I mean, we live in New York. We all go shop in New York City. It's expensive as it is. 9% um, federal um, sales tax on top of everything, that's a lot. That's a lot, but getting especially back, for get, Yeah, yeah getting back to Herman Cain, I, I, I like his simplicity because a lot of politicians, they just throw out numbers and, and ideas, and it's very, very confusing, and there's a lot of numbers. But, uh, and he's very charismatic, but again, you know, he's not a politician. I, I do worry about that inexperience when we look at Obama, you know, especially in the, in the realm of foreign affairs. How would he deal with these rogue dictators like Assad? How would he deal with a national transitional council in Libya? Does he know about the different ethnic divides in North Africa and the Middle East? There's a lot of different components to it, and, and I think it's difficult for somebody like Tommy Cain. And CJ, you had said you were a more of a moderate conservative. Mm -hmm. um, would Herman Cain be your ideal presidential candidate because he is very, very far right. If you right. look at all his social views, he's very far right. Herman Cain would definitely not be my, my first endorsement. Um, but as you guys said, his simplicity of his message is, is clear. It attracts many Americans, especially in the, uh, in the Republican Party and a lot of moderates as well. Um, but Herman Cain, uh, his absence on foreign policy issues just because of the careers that he's been involved in and just his overall absence in politics I think um, it makes Americans a little hesitant to to go and endorse him to go and vote for him and I think that's the issue there people like me who are more middle right I'm looking for someone who can who can beat Obama that comes with experience that comes with a good economic background that comes with some some governance experience for me that would be someone like Mitt Romney um, someone who's not been talked about a lot is John Huntsman. He has a plethora of uh, he's not foreign policy he's not experience. But we don't know yet. It's still in the beginning. He, Huntsman would make a fantastic Secretary of State, mm -hmm. no doubt. Absolutely. He's got, he's got no following in this country. He's, in the, he's below, I think, 5%. It's Nobody unfortunate. Nobody hears of him. You know, Nobody knows who he is outside but of people who follow him. Remember John McCain in 2008. Do you and I think any of these candidates have a, have a, a means to surge. John McCain, people know who he was, though. That's, that's true. That's true. Do you yeah. think Cain is qualified to be our president if he was nominated as the Republican candidate? To be honest, no. He said no. Um, okay. I could see him as, as maybe a, uh, some sort of secretary of, of the Treasury, maybe. Some sort of economic um, advisor, maybe. brain in the in the. Will, uh, are you going to vote for Obama? Yes. You will? Yes. Next time. So, because he well, has... actually, I, I can't commit to that, but unless something drastically changes, yes. Okay, I mean, because he is pretty much, I mean, he's campa campaigning. Would you agree oh, that yeah. he's campaigning right oh, now? Absolutely. I mean, he's all over, you know, the, mid the Midwest yeah. and to the states that are important to get the vote. Mm -hmm. He's campaigning as a president. So do you think that he's a little worried that... Oh, absolutely. I mean, the reality is his approval rating is not that great. He's not overly popular. He came in definitely at a kind of a crossroads of our country, and he hasn't been this, you know, fix-all-everything great president. And I mean, it's probably not fair to ask him to be that, but... 
there definitely is a lot of room for improvement. And you don't think changing the whole landscape of the Democrats to Republicans, you don't think that that would be an improvement for this country? I, I mean, personally, no. But at the same time, it would depend on who, how, when, where, et cetera. It, and we have to look. It's going to be close in 2012. It's not going to be a mm -hmm. blowout as oh, it yeah. was in 2008. If you look at the electoral map, all the states that Obama won, that's traditionally red, He's, he's not polling well, and he's probably going to lose Virginia, North Carolina, Indiana. The, the swing states that he won, New Mexico, Colorado, he's not polling well in. It's going to go by one or two states. And if he loses one, of those, one or two of those states, he's done. President Obama has initiated failed economic policies. He has initiated policies that has hurt this nation. And we're seeing that with the Tea Partiers. We're seeing that with the Occupy Wall Streeters. And we're seeing that with all these polls. There was a poll recently that said Cain if the election was held today, would have beat President Obama 43-41 or something like that. So due to well, these those policies... polls differ. I mean, you that's know, true. Yeah, there They're are polls early. that say that Obama can beat... Can, you can't say that yet. That's I mean, true. those polls, you have to... You know, it's, it's a while away. But we'll continue to follow the election and rely on us for coverage because we'll be here. Um, and then finally, it's not written here, but I, I wanted to just bring this up. Um, there were 1,100... Uh, I don't know if you heard about this, uh, Chris. 1,100 Palestinians released from yeah. um, Israel uh, for one, one Israeli, Israeli soldier mm -hmm. to to be released. Do you? I mean, do you find that is that controversial? I mean, well, it did happen once before in the 80s, right? And that was big because that one Israeli soldier was captured, I think, in the 2006 war with Lebanon. I'm not particularly sure about the uh, the details, but it, it does seem like a good, you know, reconciliatory, you know, process for the two. But um, I, I, it's not going to lead to any statehood, not in the near future. Um, they need to come together bilaterally, not through the UN, to try to push forward movements to become. But just the state. idea that it was 1,100. I know, so, and a know. lot, you know, a lot of states and politicians they do knock Israel for the fact that you know they don't consider them a democracy I mean, or they're tyrannical. This is a good step forward. What I does think. that mean for our country? I mean, you know, 1,100 Palestinians are now free. I mean, right. Uh, How much damage could they possibly do? Well, this contributes to, to the need for some real, some, some real foreign policy initiatives on the part of, of the U.S. administration and, you know, to work to try to come up with some solution, either a two-state solution, um, the actual release of, of, of all these Palestinians uh, means that we're not heading in the right direction necessarily in terms of was this a good policy or was this a bad policy and is it going to contribute to actual means of progression? in this area. Well, that should wrap us up. We'll continue to uh, follow these hot button issues and join you again next week. We thank our panel. Thank you guys very much. And uh, we'll see you next time right here on Critical Issue.